Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain for part two of our discussion with David Thrussell here up at uh, Casa Thrussell. We're in stage two restrictions now, so, uh, you know, I'm, I think I'm quite legally allowed to come up and see you. Isn't that nice, David? You know? Oh, it takes the thrill out of the whole experience. That's right, it does. <laughs> Daniel oh, Andrews... How, how unfortunate. ...is allowed. Two people are allowed to sit down and talk to each other. You know, have... Oh, Stalin has decreed that we can converse. How yes. charming of him. In Vigdanistan. Where's Barrier in this equation, you know? <laughs> Who's next? So here we are, you know, we're still, we're coming to, I guess, maybe, maybe at least the end of the first wave of, um, uh, we're in, uh, uh, is it mid-May? Mid-May 2020? Yes. Yes. So we've made it to mid-May 2020. Um, God knows what's coming in June. But, um, so let's talk about all this, you know, how we got in this terrible mess. I mean, can we talk more broadly about in various things that led into this crisis? Because, um, you know, it's, it's, it's more than just, um, you know, something that's come out of Wuhan that's, that's, that's ended of us up in this catastrophe. Of course, of course. So. I think it's a long road that has led us here. Mm -hmm. I think you can divide that road for the sake of uh, comprehensible discussion into, into two sections. Mm -hmm. the, the first section, I would argue, is technology. Yep. Okay, so we're at this... Coincidentally, we're at this point where right now have come online all these technologies for surveillance and facial recognition and blah, blah, blah. They've all coincidentally arrived at this moment where, coincidentally, we happen to be on the doorstep of a complete totalitarian police state, you know? And that's, that's been developing for a long time. That's been a long road. Uh, you know, uh, you, could, you could chart back a hundred examples of mm -hmm. that, but let's just go to a couple. Let's go to Edward Snowden, for yes. example, you know? I mean, you know, uh, six, seven years ago, he defected, whatever, yep. he, he, wherever it was, Snowden, uh, you know, alerted the world mm -hmm. to the fact that <laughs> there was this mass surveillance apparatus. Of everybody. Of everybody. You yes. know? And people, you know, informed thinking people had thought for quite a while that this was Going most on, likely yeah. the case. Yes. But now this became Proof. mass public knowledge hmm. that there was this vast and indiscriminate surveillance apparatus that could surveil everybody at all times mm -hmm. you know and i mean that's a that's a that's a frightening and Concept. onerous realization you know mm -hmm. for, for humanity and I what think. was the reward he was given for doing that oh He's do you want me to go down this rabbit hole <laughs> i i i harbor suspicions about Edward Snowden, yeah. uh, and I harbour suspicions about the, the narrative mm. of him arriving in Hong Kong, using his credit card to book a hotel and flights, and then Do you think the, too, the, sometimes the, the surveillance apparatus that's supposedly on this Some end conspiracy can't find people are whistleblowers, almost people uh, who in a way, they're kind of letting the public know what's going on without the, you know, without them actually the NSA or the you know, CIA actually coming out and making public announcement. Do you understand? Like a whistleblower yes. can function That's... as like, we're watching you all, you know, yes. I'm yes. acting as a whistleblower just to tell you all, we're, we're fu you're all fucked. That's, that's yeah. essentially my argument, yeah, really. That's right. yeah. Because, I mean, I would argue, what's, what's the use of having this mass, incredibly expensive, incredibly involved in intricate surveillance apparatus if you can't use it to frighten the public mm -hmm. and to make them obedient? So if it's a secret, they're not going to self-censor. Yes. They're not going to behave themselves. They're not going to be obedient. So I would argue that it's possible, I think, extremely possible, mm -hmm. I think, that in some fashion or other, that was a deliberate ploy to set in place this mechanism and to make it very public that we are watching you at all times. Do not dissent. Mm -hmm. Do not step out of line because we are watching at all times. So and you think that Snowden could be actually, you know, basically still working for the people he was working for. It's just that he was sent out as a kind of, um, in a way, a double agent to kind like of like a, inform. A Trojan horse. A Trojan sort, horse to you know? basically spill the beans, basically saying, you know, we have the whole world under mass su surveillance and we wanted you all to know, like the doomsday machine in, in Dr. Strangelove, you know, like, what's the point of having the doomsday machine if you don't tell everybody, exactly. right? Exactly. Yeah. What's the point of having this mass, incredibly expensive, surveillance machine mm -hmm. if you don't use it to cow the population because that's the real aim it's not there to, yeah, yeah. To, it's not there to catch terrorists or yeah. whoever or blah blah whatever you can forget those arguments yeah. already they're ridiculous so that's bullshit you know but it's there to cow and and uh, make the 
population politically obedient. One right? thing I've noticed is that um, in this time, it seems like that you know that the enemy is not necessarily terrorism, or the enemy is not you know even China, for example, during this crisis. The enemy is basically the people in the countries. You know what I mean? Like yes. you know, you see that with the police. You see, there's a whole thing about first of all disarming people obviously there's that event in um obviously there's the whole port arthur thing which we don't need to get into but i think that could be a false flag that obviously disarmed australia they're having more trouble disarming americans but you know there's this huge thing about disarming and then next thing you know the police are the ones walking around with the exact weapons they confiscated you with you if, if the public no longer has all these automatic you know machine guns basically why are the literally they have australian police walking around now at, at demonstrations with machine guns I would argue that there's an obvious path in all these things that lead to now. Yeah. You know, and I mean, as I was arguing, technology is one of them. You know, the facial rec recognition technology has just come online in Australia. Well, isn't that a coincidence? You yes. Know? Just in time to stop, uh, you know, all public dissent, all public uh, demonstration, protest, blah, 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 blah. You know, there's, uh, you know, there's all, uh, all sorts of technologies that have obviously come online. Drone technology yep. has now come online. I mean, you, could, you can pull up a hundred examples of this. And I would argue the other well, side of that, that uh, discussion is ideology. Yes. You know, and the ideological component, I would suggest, is, um, uh, you know, identity politics and yep. all these things have, have really weaponized this obedient class of people mm -hmm. who will, and I call them the enabling class, yes, you know, yes, as, you, yes. as you know. People responded to that, um, you know, description last time. I okay, well, I think it's accurate, you know, that, that we now have this fully weaponized enabling class who are there to act as absolute instruments of the establishment mm -hmm. and to do their bidding and to do their bidding with enthusiasm to be basically their sheepdogs, mm -hmm. to corral the public, yes. censor them, control them, keep them uh, in their paddock and herd them into this place where you, uh, right now we're on the doorstep, clearly, I would argue, mm -hmm. of this uh, totalitarian uh, regime mm -hmm. and we have all these sheepdogs around patrolling the public, know. you know, yeah. uh, exactly, <laughs> and, um, you know, keeping them on the reservation. Well, an interesting thing that, that's happened, um, obviously, and we shouldn't even really talk about this, not the conspiracy theory, in relation to 5G, but one thing we can talk about, uh, because they take down videos off YouTube if you talk sure. about it. I mean, that's, which I don't know, I mean, you know, I'm not that's entirely sure. In itself. I'm not entirely sure if I buy the 5G thing, but I do know that if you talk about it too much, they take down the fucking video. What but I, I do what, know, for what example. What I would buy yep. is that you should be able to discuss any damn thing that you like. Of course. You know? yeah. Right or wrong, mm. tenuous information, mm compelling information, yep. whatever. Why on earth yeah. can you not discuss a theory or a proposition around anything? Yes. You know, what, 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 is, what is this exactly? But I received an email just saying, you know, like here are the 30 or 40 suburbs that now have 5G and it was rolled out literally the past two, two months it's, it's been built. Mm -hmm. and, and then I looked up my suburb and thank God the fucking thing wasn't on it yet. You know, it's not okay. quite, quite uh -huh. in my suburb. Uh -huh. I think I'm gonna to have to move up the country somewhere near you, David, so. We can recommend it. All right, we can recommend it. I think that's maybe a place <laughs> to leave part one, ladies and gentlemen. So Thank we'll you. be back in a minute with part two of the report from Tiger Mount with David Thrussell here spreading some controversial but independent free thinking. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> part two, ladies and gentlemen, here we are with David. We're in this crisis. Um, you know, obviously it's technology and what was the other thing you were mentioning? Ideology. Ideology have brought us into this into yeah. this mess. Let's discuss the mess itself. Did you see that video online where this, uh, basically the Gestapo, the Australian Gestapo, were dragging a woman and separating her from a child. She was walking alone with her child. And she wasn't at the demonstration. She was somehow near it. Or maybe she'd been at the demonstration and she was leaving it. Yeah. And then this, this female police officer decided to target her for some reason. And then, you know, about 15 of them descended on her to arrest her. If they're worried about social distancing, the ones who are breaking the social distancing laws were the police. Yeah, look, I, I, I did see the video. I, I found it traumatic. Yes, um, it's terrible. There was also another one that I saw of uh, uh, some fellow, I think he was in Melbourne, uh, he was not involved in uh, the, yeah. the protest, I believe, but he was on the side of the street opposite, walking with his kid or kids in, in a pusher, surrounded by the police, kids dragged out of the pusher screaming, him arrested, uh, I think, or something. Yes, I think a lot of us have seen these videos. Um, they're, they're ugly um, in the extreme. Um, you know, I mean, I think they... 
you know, they're, they're, um, I think they're there for a couple of reasons. I think they're probably, possibly de designed to provoke the population. I think um, so, yeah. Um, and I think they're also there to chill us. And they're also foreshadowing of where we are. Because I think that if there's compelling evidence to um, conclude that we're on the doorstep, really, of a totalitarian New world state. Order. You know, it's we're right on the doorstep. It's right in front of us. Yep, yep. There's no point pretending otherwise. Uh, you, you, you can, but you're not going to do yourself any favours and you're certainly not going to do anyone else any favours. I mean, it also tells us, you know, if that's in the zeitgeist, if that's in the public sphere, yep. and a lot of people are, um, are encouraging that behaviour yeah, on, yeah. on, on the part of the authorities, that tells you that the next step is not far off. Yes. Know? So we are sort of pulling out, we're sort of coming out. I mean, obviously we were in stage three lockdown. We're now in stage two. So we are sort of, I mean, I, I did often wonder, is this event a kind of test? You know what I mean? Like, is yes. this, you know, and I do think it is to some extent because I do think it's like, you know, as you, as you said in the last video, they push you as far as they see you'll go. And I think one of the purposes of those videos is why they target a single mother and drag the child away. Because they want to see how people react when they do it to one person. So they figure if, if they get away with that, well, maybe they'll do it to 10 next time or 100, you know, you know drag everyone away. And you, there's another photograph. I don't think it was from Australia, but it's like children who are social distancing. They're basically in the playground in squares. It's like one of the saddest images you've seen. It's online already. And, you know, and there's something about the cabal itself. The cabal itself needs to reveal itself. I don't know if you saw on um, David Letterman, not David Letterman, David Letterman doesn't exist, that, that, that repulsive um, sex criminal he took over, Stephen Colbert, he took over after, um, after David Letterman, he took over The Tonight Show, mm. and had Bill Gates on, and you know, he said, um, he was talking about you know, what, what good he's been doing, he said, oh, you know, we've, all the, uh, you know, all, we've been you know, causing children's deaths in, in, um, in Africa, he kind of like used the wrong word, I think he meant to say preventing, and then he said, he said, preparing or something like he, okay, the sure. wrong word came out and he kind of went like this he went you know like oh sure. but then, it was almost like a Freudian slip you know and he, he does have a habit too of, of laughing at particularly sinister moments he laughed recently when yeah. people when, when it was like yes people are going to be ruined economically he went <laughs> yeah well, this tells you all you really need to know yeah I think you know um but yeah look I do I think these are signals whether they're deliberate signals or not they're still signals that we are, are right there, you know? Yeah. And look, I don't pay much attention to these stage two, lockdown stage three, blah, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, the nuts and bolts of it are that the government and the authorities can tell you now, supposedly, according to them, they can tell you who you can have in your home, mm -hmm. who you can have a conversation with. Uh, these are outrages. People should be outraged by this sort of stuff, nuts and bolts. Mm. It's absolutely outrageous. Mm. And yet the vast majority of people, because they're programmed by this weaponized System. media that we have, mm -hmm. you know, they're completely compliant with these things, which are actually fundamentally outrageous propositions. Well, know? I remember seeing just an article in The Age, and The Age is considered, the, I guess, the, the mild left newspaper, and it basically said, what you can and can't do. They lo and they love it too. You'll notice these tin pot <laughs> politicians. Yeah. Yeah. They love it. You know the yeah. local idiot Dan Andrews, Andrews, and Andrews Scott you know, Morrison. You and can that. you can you can you can basically see the the perspiration of joy <laughs> oozing out of him as he tells people exactly. what they can or can't do. Like and they're ridiculous. I mean, they are at face ridiculous. Mm -hmm. These things. And you know, I mean, we could go into detail about how stupid that all that stuff is. But you know, what, yes. this week you can't go camping, but you can play golf. Well, it's ridiculous. Well, my local Coles... Go to hell. Frankly, go to hell. Exactly. Know? I went to my local Coles, um, I think it was like maybe a few nights ago, maybe a Sunday night at about 6pm. It was a busy time and it was fucking packed. It was like three. It was like a rock concert in there. People were not social distancing at all. Believe me, if you went to the beach, if you went to a park, even 10 or 15 of you, there's no way that would be less safe than going into this particular Coles at this moment. People were not social distancing. It was just jam-packed full of... And it's weird the way that, like, a giant you know, conglomerate like Coles or Bunnings, is that's OK to go to. But a little business, a little bookshop or a little record shop or a little this and that, they might have two or three people in it it's, at any time. It's, it's about control. Don't, don't think... I mean, look, there was a certain amount of social capital that people were... Uh, you know, they were OK to extend out of the goodness, uh, you know, their you know, naive goodness of their hearts, basically, perhaps 
this uh, this is a genuine um, crisis event. You know, uh, there there's a certain amount of social capital. People go, okay, we'll we'll take some so, uh, some sacrifices mm -hmm. for the the general good. I think for any sensible person that has expired a long time ago. Now. I think so. Yeah. These these measures, they were always ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Now they're clearly even more than ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, and they are, you know, they they are this, you know, they're the they're um, a sort of fetish for these tin pot dictators like this Andrews, yep, idiot character. whatever. But 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 they're, they're I mean they're everywhere. I mean our, yeah. our political establishment and our media establishment and the bureaucratic establishment are peppered with these mm -hmm. pa people who lust for tin pot power. Yep, you yep. know, so it's it's almost pointless pointing out. Example, the exact be, examples, yeah, yeah. It's it's full they're, of them. And they're irreplaceable because when he goes, they just bring in another. Well, there's one. another one, you know. I mean, they're all. I, I view them as kind of used car salesmen. You know, they're yeah, just yeah. these middling, powerless, unintelligent, unimpressive people who will say yes to authority mm -hmm. always. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, and so they can be exactly they can be replaced with another idiot mm -hmm. who will flex their muscles and enjoy flexing them. You know? There's something about the cabal wanting to show itself, you know, I mean, that's one of the weird things about it too, is it kind of shows its fangs sometimes. Like we were commenting about uh, Marina Abramic and Jacob Rothschilds were in front of that picture. What was it the name? Satan, um, like kind of like... Uh, raises his legions. Raises his legions. Yes. And then there was that video, Marina Abramovic um, did a video for Microsoft, Bill Gates' Microsoft, right? Where she, I don't know, was some an, exhibition. That's an odd coincidence, isn't, isn't it? it? Very it's odd. A very odd happenstance. Right in the middle of yes. this crisis, it was about yeah. about three weeks ago it came on and and then it received something like i don't know i mean obviously when something is apple it receives normally a lot of likes it receives something like 100 200 likes but it received like fifty thousand non-likes mm -hmm. and they removed it you mm -hmm. know what i mean so it's interesting why like, people sort of know and and particularly when when the cabal does um show its fangs so to speak you know would you like to speak to that well i think one thing which i think is easily neglected that that shows is that and it's this thing that the establishment doesn't recognise mm. and they don't want to recognise and actually it frightens them and they hate it, mm. is that most people are decent people if they're given some information or the opportunity to be decent. They are, unlike the establishment, yes. they're, you know, they're decent people. And, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. if it's laid out in front of them, mm. they What's will respond yeah, yeah. appropriately. And angrily, Unlike yeah. the establishment who... They go along with it, yeah. Well, corrupted. Uh, you know, I mean, there's... I don't know. I don't know if they're literal vampires, but yes. they're certainly <laughs> metaphoric vampires. Yes, exactly. You know, and they're and they're parasites, and they are. Yep. And I think it's really true when people point out that the establishment, and you see this even in our our you know pathetic middling political establishment and the media establishment, mm -hmm. they hate the common people. They hate them. Oh, yeah, open, yeah, yeah. crack open the, the the Guardian or one of these horror oh, things they, if you yeah. if you dare, mm -hmm. you know, just to see what the enemy is up to. Yeah, yeah. They hate the always. common people. They yeah, hate yeah. them with a vengeance. You know? Oh, but they always love immigrants, supposedly. As long as the immigrants that they're talking about push their, their kind of new left philosophy. If, if, there's a, if there's an immigrant who has a different opinion, or might be a right-wing uh, right African-American, or, say, a Muslim who has a more stringent view on um, gen gender politics or something, that's never discussed, first well, of all, in The Guardian at all, and it's never also promoted. Then. Ultimately, the, the elite, the establishment, whatever you want to call them, Ultimately, they hate people. You know, they yeah. hate people. You know, yeah. and th you, you can see this. I mean, you saw it in the in the Guardian. You know, mm -hmm. no matter what's your opinion of Brexit, blah blah blah, yeah. whatever. Uh, that was a vote by a, a, a majority of people, yeah. and the elite uh, hated it and wanted to yeah. suspend democracy. Yeah, you know, to change it. Same as the Trump election. Whatever your opinion of that. Yes, that is an election. That is mm. a display of democracy. And because it wasn't the authorized one. They had conniptions. I mean, the next day was extraordinary. It know? is, it is. And I think we'll talk about that in part three, the way that the elite have reacted, because I guess in a way, the planet has also somehow woken up to this, you know, and to some extent with Brexit and with Trump and with other things. Uh, we'll talk about that in part three. Um, we'll be back soon. Thank you, David. Free thinker. Mr. I'm here with Mr. David Thrust. We'll be back for part three soon. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to part three of our discussion with David Thrussell uh, here, free thinker. Um, now, I, I, again, I'll raise the issue of uh, conspiracy theories because, you know, I mean, things like um, compulsory vaccine, um, a tracking device that we all carry around with us. Um, you mean a phone? 
well, obviously there's a phone, <laughs> but like some kind of interior chip that we carry around with us. All this kind of stuff was, was you know, definitely tin foil hat. You had to be a tin foil hat sure. um, wearing person, you know, because, you know, they were the kind of people the last 15, 20 years that have been warning that this was coming. This is coming. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Bill Gates is quite literally saying he wants to uh, give everybody on the planet, 7 billion people, a, a vaccination and some kind of, whether it be a chip or some kind of little stamp or something that will, you know, be like a, you know, show that you've been vaccinated, if you in, in a way. Sure. And uh, and you don't just need one vaccine; you need a whole series of them, apparently. Mm -hmm. So, um, it's extraordinary that you know what was once considered like you know tin foil hat, you know lizards off with the lizards, Alex Jones and David Icke, is literally coming out of you know mainstream news as what's about to happen in the next year or two. David, what an extraordinary time we live in. Like, it is. Yeah. I mean, if I, I I really feel if if people even. Um, uh, you know, people. I, I understand. There's a spectrum of, of beliefs and and a spectrum of ideologies involved, and and that's all fine. But speaking in the broadest possible terms, if you haven't twigged by now that something is seriously up, then there is there's actually you're beyond help, really. I mean, if you haven't twigged, I don't care where you are on the political ideological spectrum, whatever. If you haven't twigged that something smells super dodgy by now. You never will. I mean, it doesn't Isn't it matter. Isn't funny, too? You know? When you're talking about political ideologies, I'll bring this up. It's, it's interesting the way I've heard in the news they'll say, like, oh, you know, who are the people who are protesting? Oh, well, it's it's radical far-righters and, oh, and radical far-lefters. Suddenly the far-right and the far-left who are supposedly ultimate enemies are now literally, like, on the same steps together. What one, Some of them in America are carrying AR-15s. The others are down with the 1%. Oh, look. But these people are on the same side now. I, I, and it's I, in a way funny, because you and I a bit too, you know, I mean, I, I came a bit from the right, you a bit more from the left at one stage. Look, so. I, I, I declare myself to be politically unaffiliated, yes, to be honest. Yes. I, I see the left well, too, and too. the right as, as, as political traps, mm -hmm. you know, and I do, I mean, I look, I glanced across the Guardian yesterday, Lord preserve me, why do I do it to myself, you know? <laughs> Masochism, and, I watched well, the oh, ABC. Maybe it was, maybe it was two it's or like three days. It's like self-flagellation. Yeah, probably, you know. I, no, I, no I, the way I justify it is, I, I, is, is to see what the enemy are up to. Yes. You know? But I, it was, maybe it was a couple of days ago. There was literally about these protests in, yeah. in Melbourne, which I have to admit I know basically nothing, nothing about, about mm -hmm. okay? So I can't really feel like I can comment on them. But the sub-headline was, and this is a quote, Dickheads being dickhead, dickheads uh, doing dickhead stuff. Yeah, you know, and you go. I mean, I knew, I knew that journalism had deteriorated died yeah. a long time ago. Yeah, you know, but that is the that is the nadir for me. That's yeah. we've hit the bottom. Dickheads doing dickhead stuff. Because half the people who are protesting were definitely of a left wing origin. There are many people on the left who are suspicious of this agenda. You know what I mean? And so they're almost like describing one of their own protests. I don't know whether it be of refugees or whatever, as saying, oh, you know, it's just a bunch of dickheads doing dickhead stuff. I well, mean, this is the level sure. they've sunk to. Uh, yeah, I, look, I agree, but, mm. but pull out, you know. Yep. There's a bunch of citizens, I actually honestly don't know what they were saying. Sure. Uh, but there's a bunch of citizens with a concern about something that's happening. And you're calling them dickheads doing dickhead stuff. I yeah, mean, because you won't enter into the I'm argument. Out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm out. I mean, that's just that's a, yeah. that's beyond absurd. And you know, you can you can you know that this is another step along this the road to the point where we've we've got to, mm -hmm. and it's it's uh, the the collapse of journalism because there's there's no journalism in Australia. Mm -hmm. It's gone. It's finished, and it's finished a long time ago. But I mean, this is another step. Last year, I think it was last year, you know, in, or maybe the year before last year, perhaps, in response to terrorism, TM, mm -hmm. um, you know, the law became in Australia that journalists, certainly not the general public, but even journalists couldn't report on what I think, I'm working from memory here, was called restricted uh, events or something like this. These are operations by the intelligence agencies, mm. which they declare to be, I think it was restricted events or privileged events or whatever it was. Yes. And journalists, if they report on those, even inadvertently, uh -huh. they face up to five years jail. You see now this? let's yes, this passed last year. This is law Unbelievable. in Australia. Unbelievable. Barely barely anybody said boo about this. Mm -hmm. So you know that this is this is a this is a real problem. Extraordinary. You know? yeah. So because there is, the media it, is such a collaboratory, you know, like they would oh, not better do this without it's the media. It's the weapon. It's yeah. the weapon yeah. against our heads is yeah. the media. You know? And but it's even just constant the media, fear. Yeah. Even the media. So 
a journalist, if one even still exists in Australia, yeah. can inadvertently, without knowing about it, because these operations are secret, uh-huh. report on a restricted operation or whatever it's called, mm possibly go to jail for five years. So what does that mean? That means if there's one last journalist hiding undercover somewhere in Australia, <laughs> they know that they can't. The chilling effect is incredible. They know that they can't report on anything except press releases from the government and corporations because they might bump into a restricted operation and put themselves in jail for five years. Yeah. I mean, it's the kind of thing that Joseph Stalin would have found dictatorial. You know? uh, it's, it's, he would have been jungle Joe would have been, look, you're going too far. Steady on, people. Steady let's on. Just, let's not, yeah. Let's just let's hold stop. back a moment. Yeah, yeah. Here, Hang on. You know? This is getting a bit Stalinist. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh, what am I saying? Yeah, it's actually <laughs> extraordinary stuff. Yeah, this yeah. past, I think it was last year, middle of last year or something, yep. with barely a squeak, you know? Yep. I mean, what I, you know, what I really want to pull all this into sure. is, is what I call the architecture of fear. You know, and mm-hmm. we've had this long campaign and there's been many, many things for people to be frightened about, you know, to drive obedience, you know, to drive, um, uh, you know, self-censorship, you know. The architecture of fear, ladies and gentlemen. The, the architecture of fear, you know, and this has been, this has obviously been implemented in our society for a long, long time. And you can break it down into all sorts of events, you know. I mean, one of the easiest to dissect in some ways is terrorism. Mm-hmm. Of incorporated, course, yeah. which has know. vanished in this crisis, which has oddly vanished. Same you know. with global warming. I mean, and, and it seems like I mean, this has been a particularly cold winter in Australia. I mean, it's freezing. You, you know that up here. Oh, look, yeah. look. There's there's a multitude of these things. You can yeah, pick, yeah, yeah. I mean, Y two K, yeah, peak yeah. oil. Peak I mean, there's oil, yeah. there's one after another. They they they're like clockwork. Suddenly, oil you know. is eighty cents too. You know, it's been like a dollar sixty for I don't know almost ten years. Suddenly, it's eighty cents. I mean, it's ridiculous. I mean, you know. Oh, look, you know, so, you know, we have this architecture of fear and terrorism is a good one to dissect, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, because, yeah. yes, bombs uh, explode, uh, things happen, people die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's terrible. It's emotive. But yeah. all of these things, uh, I feel you can dissect them as, as product launches, okay? Yeah. So the terrorism is the, is the, the uh, you know, if you've worked in marketing or, or advertising or whatever or, or anything, you've done yeah. events or whatever, you know that you need to have a publicity blitz, you need to of have course, an advertising yeah, yeah, yeah. campaign. And you need an so event, the terrorism, you know, to promote, so yeah, to speak. Yeah. yeah, the terrorism <laughs> yeah. is the advertising campaign yeah, yeah. for the product. The product was state control, yep, yep. surveillance, curtailment of civil rights, etc., etc. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And now this one, the, yep. the, it's another product launch. Yeah, yeah. So the virus mm-hmm. is the advertising campaign for the product. Yeah, and the product is... is utter totalitarianism. That's the product. That's it's it's utter it's technological surveillance, you know, mm. en- enabled by technology. You know, mm. I mean, you cannot. No rational thinking person, I think, could argue that this timing is accidental. No, all I these agree. technologies have come online right mm. at this moment, and bam. There so, it do you is. want this product, ladies and gentlemen? Do you want this mass surveillance and mass fear campaign? Do you want total? Um, you know. It's as you said in the last video. It's kind of like the USSR is being built in Western civilization. In do you two want months. it? Is? Two you months. There was. I don't think you fucking do. I know he doesn't, and no, I don't. I don't so no. let's go for a little walk. We're going to walk out the back and shoot a little, you know, video on can we pull ourselves out of this and let's talk about the depopulation agenda, you know, because this is a fucking scary time we're living. All right, pack for the final part four. Report from Tiger Mountain. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to part four of the report from Tiger Mountain. Here with free thinker David Thrussell. We're talking about this uh, uh, no no jab, no pay. What's what, what's the story with that? You know, look, it's just a, it's a, it's yet another step in this um, government control matrix. You know, mm-hmm. and I mean, as we were just discussing off off camera, you would have presumed whether well, your views on that, whatever, you know, but you would have thought that that would things like things like that would have tripped the wire of you know, civil liberties. Yes. You know? And and people, whether they're concerned about that as an issue or not directly, mm-hmm. they would have gone, this is a clear uh, breach. This is a clear sort of overrun of civil liberties. They didn't, they didn't really, you know, and I mean, you know, as far as where this is building towards... And all the uh, AC, all, all like the ACLU and all the civil liberties groups, they just shut up during all this. Have you of noticed course, that? Of course, they're all gutless. They're, they're all... Yeah. 
they're all just bureaucratic little self-service when yeah. it comes to the end of the day. You yes. know? I mean, I think where this is leading, unless, as you've said and, and, and we've all said, unless there is significant and measurable pushback. pushback, a critical mass of pushback, where this leads is will be to control over every aspect of your life. You know, mm-hmm. you won't, you know, unless there's pushback. You won't I think be able to buy pushback. food. I mean, a lot of people on Facebook, they're not into this. I mean, at least I would say almost like 40 to 50% of people um, are not going to go along with it. Maybe 20% are on the fence. Let's say 40% won't go along with it. 20% are on the fence. And 40% are ready to line up and please jeb me as many times as you want, Mr. Bill well, Gates. I, I love you very much. If that's the case, mm-hmm. I find it very interesting that those people who aren't up for the program mm-hmm. have no voice in the media. Oh, of course they you don't. Know, I mean, well, that's... They're know, the dickheads that were described uh, this, in the Guardian. What this tells you, what this tells you, I think, is that our entire media class and our entire political class are clearly illegitimate. They're Absolutely. clearly Ill- illegitimate. We need to get rid of them. Yep. We need to move them on. They are not well, fit that's for what purpose. Little shows like this are about. They're well, trying to, you know, get a, another kind of voice out there, mate. What do you think? Absolutely. Doing, They're not fit for purpose. If you yep. had any doubt in your mind, and I feel like it's been obvious for decades, yeah. but if you've had your doubts, now is the time where you really should move beyond those doubts yep. and recognise they, the media, the political class, they're not fit for purpose. They are illegitimate. They have done nothing but serve us incredibly poorly Mm -hmm. in this situation you know and we will get to a point where you will not you know if there's no significant pushback you will not be able to buy food Mm -hmm. without this ridiculous app thing you know I mean, the sky's limit. You won't be able to travel without it. Yeah, there's a rumor I mean, you can't travel without it. That's already being fly, flown up. The well, I mean, all this but... is obvious. You yeah, know, yeah. I mean, come on. You know, you won't be able to. I mean, drop a list. So we've spoken lot about a lot of doom and gloom. I mean, you know, and and obviously the the way to fight back is to literally fight back, is to push back against this, is to yes. say no to this, right? Say no. Yep, say yep. no. Make Resist. independent media like this and absolutely. get the word out you know, there. And you know? absolutely, yes. Any yes. other advice? Well, I, you know, I, I'm not sure. Of, you know how important people might think this is, but my assumption is, my working assumption is that uh, you know, you know, chatter, chatter, what people are talking about. You know, you know, there's uh, probably uh, it's, it's likely there's a whole sort of AI system monitoring all this stuff, yep, and and deciding how far possibly they can go with this stuff without the man in the street, you know, the average person actually throwing down the gauntlet and saying enough of this yeah, yeah. absolute utter bullshit, you know? Because, you know, I mean, as you were saying before, I don't think humanity is evil. I don't think humanity, you know, really wants to hang around with the Rothschilds no, and Marina Abramovic no, and murder it's children and, and, and uh, you know, sacrifice, you know. Yeah, you know. No. It's this, the, this seems to just be, you know, they'll go to Epstein's Island or, you know, yeah. do what Harvey Weinstein was doing, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, this just yeah. doesn't appear to be what people really want to do. You no, know, I don't think people really no, are that no, evil. No. Is that right? I, I agree. I mean, I, I think the irony of this situation is, you know, our political elite and our political establishment, they are the parasites. They are evil. They have an enabling class mm-hmm. that is, is like the barnacles on the on the ship's hull that yes. travels with them yes. and enables the, their movement Fellow through travelers. the oceans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Um, on the ship but of these, doom, yeah. Yeah, these people essentially hate humankind yes you know, and they, they hate humanity time and time again you know? yeah. um and we could really do without them actually you know? yeah, yeah yeah and and i think i think it's important to, to recognize that they are illegitimate they do not have their power is the, illegitimate yeah they, they don't have a right to power and influence they have it and they seem to be spades. foisting events upon us as you're saying like advertising campaigns from september 11 which was like the advertising campaign for the war on terror of, of and course. this virus which is yeah. the advertising campaign for Full totalitarianism. The lockdown. The yeah. lockdown. You know, the totalitarian well, lockdown. Yeah. We're here to say fuck you to those forces, ladies and gentlemen. What do you say, David? Got a message for them? It's they're illegitimate. You know, like you can you can refuse their power over you. So let's refuse it. Okay. We Please. shall refuse. We refuse here at the uh, report from Tiger Mountain. And uh, I think that's a good chat today, David. Is that enough for you? Certainly. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your time, David. And we'll be back. We'll come back and discuss some more things up here uh, at uh, David's uh, wonderful compound. And um, we'll talk more about the uh, crisis the world is in. But thank you all for listening. And thank you for taking the time to uh, watch the report from Tiger Mountain with Richard Walston Croft, myself, and David Trussell. Cheers.